start the journey, uh, you know, the 16 to 21s. Mm. Tell me a little bit about that time and tell me how dark it, it went because one of the things that we want, really want to zoom in on here that, you know, the, everyone is here looking at you as a superhero, but it's been a journey of light and dark, hasn't it? Absolutely, yeah. I came from a very dark place in myself and, uh, as I said in the video there, I started drinking and using at 16 and culminated really at the age of 21, um, having left school, uh, couldn't drive, hadn't held down a job, living in a, a small flat in, in the east end of London, the far reaches there. Um, no furniture in the place, uh, just sleeping on a mattress on the ground with the windows blacked out with uh, black bags. Um, just wake up in the morning um, and just get stoned. I wouldn't even know if it's a night or day. You know, I could hear the letterbox going with the let, you know, the mail coming in. It just filled me with fear. I, I just had this incredible fear towards dealing with life, really. Um, so, you know, obviously, there's a huge contrast between what I just did and, and, and some of the things that's happened in my life since then. And, and that place. So tell me about, can I ask you the why? Why? And give us a bit more detail. Why the anger? Why the recluse? Why the hurt overdose? Why the suicidal? Why you try to commit suicide? Why do you think? And do you rationalize about that? Clearly, you had 49 days to think about it, anyway. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, a lot of time to think about life. Um, I suppose coming from a, an alcoholic home, my father was, was an alcoholic. I, I kind of followed in his footsteps. Uh, he, he left when I was, when I was very young. Um, by the time I got to 16, like I, I, I was like a lot of young men, quite, quite angry. Um, I was coming to terms with the fact that I was gay. Um, it was just a, a real culmination of stuff. And I suppose I was a sitting duck really for, for alcohol and drugs. Um, and then when I did, did use for the first time and did drink, um, it was almost like a bit of a release for, for what was going on inside. Um, but that was very short lived, you know. I sort of uh, was on a very, very quick um, path to, to destruction within that, you know. So when you then went through rehab and you came out clean, just bring us through that and we'll move on to the, the light side then. Yeah, um, yeah, look, it's, 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 it's my foundation, I suppose, that whole, that whole time. You know, if you ask me what my greatest achievement is ever, it was getting clean and managing to stay clean and sober for most of my, all my 20s, you know, 21. Um, you know, taking away the alcohol and drugs and being left with yourself is a very, very stark and, and desolate place. You know, I almost felt like there was no horizon. And in the beginning, and um, you know, I, I, I did look to look to suicide at, at, at that time. It wasn't something that crossed my mind when I was drinking and using. But when I took it, when I took away the alcohol and drugs, um, I got I got obsessed with that, and I thought that was the answer, really. And I suppose in, in hindsight, looking back, you know, I thought I hated life, and I thought I hated myself. Um, but, but in fact, I, did, I loved life, and there were so many things that I wanted to do, but I just didn't have the belief, the courage. Um, the self-esteem to do them, you know, and it was just, it was incredibly frustrating that I couldn't go out and do anything because I was just too afraid, really. I was in this little apartment, you know, I hadn't had a job, like I said, and all this sort of stuff. So, really, for me, getting clean and sober was, you know, starting from scratch, really, you know. Um, a lot of people said, I've their life, you know, my youth, and um, I had to start again at 21.